first of all, thank you very much for uh, coming here this morning or this afternoon. I have the, I've had the privilege of being in this transformation industry for the last 20 years. I've worked with uh, almost 700,000 people in 37 countries, from some of the most wealthiest people in the world to some of the most deprived people in the world. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is what I call a completely new shift in how you can probably look at your life. I've worked with people and I've seen that most people are looking for results, they're looking for success, they're looking for outcomes, they're looking for goals, dreams, wishes, they're looking for ways to improve the quality of their life. And they spend maybe 25, 35, 40 years of their life struggling, working hard, trying to find a way to create wealth for their family, improve their health and become better people. But I've also looked at the fact that almost probably 90% plus people around the world actually don't achieve much or they don't achieve what they really want to achieve. They, don't, they, they live in a, in a world of disappointment, in a, in a world of illusion, in a world that when they pass away, they may be thinking, did I do enough for the people that I've worked with? Did I do enough for my family? Did I do enough for my country? So what I'm going to do today, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to share with you some probably unique ideas, some ideas that you may think are a little crazy, but I can give you enough evidence to prove to you that if you listen to what I have to offer you to today, you may have or you will have a radical shift in every result that you've ever wanted to create in your life. So let me give you an example. I've worked with people that have had, for example, cocaine addiction or alcohol addiction, or have people who have been stammering or stuttering, people who have consistently failed in their businesses, people who have uh, excessive obesity, uh, obesity, have had massive weight gain, and in a period of maybe 24 to 48 hours, they've made conscious decisions where they have got results almost 100% of the times. Almost 100% of the time. So imagine someone who's addicted to cocaine for, for 10 years, and through a system which I'm gonna share with you very quickly, they're able to make a decision and constantly, consistently follow up and follow through in actually getting rid of the habit of taking cocaine. Or somebody, for example, who's been stammering or stuttering for 20 years of their life, finding a systematic, easy way to get rid of that stuttering or stammering so they're able to be, break free and speak easily. Or someone that's been obese all their life and finding a way to do that. So I'm gonna uh, say a very controversial statement maybe. I think positive thinking, I think you know the self-help movement of positive thinking is being the biggest problem for positive failure in the world. I'm not a big believer of positive thinking at all. In fact, I think positive thinking is a way that people get an, uh, a, a kind of hope that they're going to achieve something. So if I look at my life right now and I say, my God, you know, I'm going through stress, I'm going through difficulty, but you know what? I'm going to think positive. I'm going to think positive. And every single day, I'm thinking life's going to get good, life's going to get good, life's going to get good. And I turn around and I see a tidal wave of disaster coming my way. That's not going to help me. I can wake up in the morning, I can wear red underwear, beat my chest and say, life is great. But that's not going to change my life. I can sit there and give affirmations all day long. They're all helpful, make me feel good, but will I get the result? So this is what I've discovered. I've discovered that we're used to setting goals. We're used to setting targets. We're used to you know, trying to achieve. Yet most people fail. Why is that? So here's the example. Imagine I'm a soldier. I'm now gearing up for war. So I go to my military training. I learn how to fire a a rifle, I learned how to fire a machine gun, a sniper, I learned how to fly a helicopter, I learned the art of war, and then I enter the battlefield. But my identity says to me that I cannot kill anyone. I'm t I, mean, I will never murder anyone, I will never fight or fire a gun to murder anyone. Will I be able to become an effective soldier? Never in my life, because my identity versus my skill and my outcome do not match. So here's an example. Somebody wants to lose weight and they say, you know, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. But in the back of their mind, their identity is one of those people that says, I cannot lose weight. Whatever I do, I fail. Whatever I try, I fail. There's a complete mismatch between result and identity. I want to become rich. But a little voice in your head is saying, you can't become rich. Your parents were not rich. You don't have the education. You don't have the background. There's a complete mismatch on that. So if I set my goals, like New Year's resolutions are coming, almost 99% of people that set New Year's resolutions often do not achieve them because they go out for the goal and in the, the mindset, the identity 
is in the background always telling you whether you can or whether you can't. So here's an example. I started a business when I was 19. When I was 19, I pretty much failed my exams, my English, my mathematics three times. I was considered to be someone that will never achieve anything in life. I believed all my teachers telling me I will never achieve something. Then one day, in my mind, I made a decision. I made a decision that I said to myself, what do I need to think in my head? What do I need to believe about me for me to become successful? What do I need to own internally? What do I need to become in my, in my soul and in my heart for me to become successful? So I discovered what I call an identity code. So over the last 20 years, I've worked with thousands of people and helped put a new code together. So here's an example. This may sound really simplistic, but I believe in simplicity. I think the most profound and most incredible things in life are often the most simplest things in life. So I'm gonna give each one of you a challenge today. I'm gonna ask you to think of something in your life that you really wanna make a difference in. I want you to think of something in your life that you've been wanting to do over and over again, but you probably have not succeeded because you've tried and you've failed and you've tried and you've failed. I'm gonna give you a, a shortcut. I'm gonna give you a mind hack. I'm gonna give you a guaranteed solution of how you can consistently achieve that. So let's take an example. Let's say you're in a relationship and you're going through a tough relationship. If I was to ask you to write down your current identity code, which means when you step into your relationship, what do you think about? What is going on in your head? What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about your partner? What do you believe are the, what do you believe are the rules for, for relationships? What do you believe are your, your identity? Somebody may say, I'm not good enough. Somebody may say, what if I get rejected? Somebody may say, what if I am the kind of person, if I show too much love, will I be weak? If you could be the perfect lover, you could be the perfect husband or the perfect wife, or the perfect mother or the perfect father, what would you need to think in your mind for you to believe that's possible? Example, if you look at Donald Trump, Donald Trump is very popular right now. And they say that Donald Trump is very aggressive, he's very rude, he may be very demeaning to women, etc., etc. But then, imagine I came up to you and I said, this is Donald Trump, and he's very kind, he's very humble, he's very pleasant, he's been very nice, what would you think? you would actually think there's something wrong because when we think of Donald Trump, we think of a certain behavior. So if he came to you and said, oh, this is Donald Trump, you'd say, no, it can't be. Something is wrong. Why is he not being aggressive? Why is he not being outrageous or not being outspoken? So your identity of who you believe you are is going to be an absolute reflection of exactly what you will achieve. So if you want to see your success in life or your failure, I can guarantee you one thing, 100%, that if you look at all the successes you have in your life right now, almost all, if not 100% of them, is a complete match with the person you believe you are. I don't know if that makes sense to you, which means that if I'm going to achieve success in a relationship, it means my identity about who I believe as a carer, a lover, a kind human being is matching with the results that I have. But if I believe that I'm insecure, if I believe that I'm jealous, I'm suspicious, and I expect a good relationship, it's never, ever, 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 ever gonna happen. So my, this is my idea. This is the philosophy that I work on. I meet someone, for example, who is addicted to alcohol. And I ask them, describe yourself to me. And they will say to me, you know what, I'm not worthy. You know, I've, my, I've let my family down. I've done financially, in, I'm in a, in, a, in a situation right now where financially I'm not doing so good. And I say to them that if you could be the perfect person that you believe you want to be, what would you need to think? What would be your rules? What would be your code of conduct? What would, be the, what would you imagine in your mind? And they say to me, you know what? If I was a person who could overcome alcohol, I'd be a strong person, I'd be decisive, I'd be focused, I'd be energetic, I would take self-responsibility, I would be persistent in action, and as a result, I would produce results. I said, if you want to give up alcohol, do you have that code right now? No, I don't. So if I could find a way to make them reprogram their thinking over and over again, and fit that code in, I can guarantee you they would get a result every single time. So I meet people, obese people. Now most people think that people are fat or overweight because they eat too much, and that's not the case at all. In fact, from my experience, almost 90% of people that are obese 
have challenges with emotions, have challenges with relationships. If we go to the gym and go and work out every single day and go on a diet, I can almost guarantee you that seven, eight, nine out of 10 people will always gain the weight back six months, seven months, one year later because they've not dealt with their emotional challenges. So I'm saying to you this, instead of focusing on your results, instead of focusing on trying to achieve your goals first, why don't we focus on building our identity first? Who is it that we need to be? What is it that we need, what we need to think? I've had the privilege of working with some of the most famous film stars around the world and some of the most successful people. And I've realized all of them have one thing in common. They're all very crystal clear about who they believe they are. They're crystal clear. If you meet Bill Gates and you read about Bill Gates, for example, when he was 14, he knew exactly what he's going to be and what he's going to do. It wasn't a matter of his goals. He knew that I'm going to achieve this. This is what I believe about myself. If you meet Mark Zuckerberg, you will realize that he's also a guy that was crystal clear on his identity of who he is as a person. For those of you out there that are right now going through a difficult time or going through a winter or an autumn in your life, and you want to make a significant, drastic change, the key thing to work on is not your goals or your dreams or your wishes, because they are a simple byproduct of your identity of who you are as a person. And I, I, if you look at the world right now, let's look at some people that are considered to be remembered forever, both good and bad. So if you think of good people, you'll think of people like, say, Mother Teresa, Mahatma Gandhi. Maybe you'll think of people like Michael Jackson, uh, Muhammad Ali, and these kind of people. These are people that will be remembered for the rest of their life. And if you look at people that are hated for the rest of their life, maybe you can look at a Hitler, you can look at a Mussolini, look at these kind of people. If you look at the difference between these two people, it's very, very crystal clear cut. On one side, you have people who focus was always out. Mother Teresa, Muhammad Ali, even Michael Jackson. These people were focusing their life about giving to people. It wasn't all about them. And if you look at all the people that are, uh, that are considered to be hated for the rest of their humanity, are people that are always focused on themselves. If you look at Hitler and Mussolini and these kind of people, Saddam Hussein, these kind of people, they're all focused on themselves. We are currently living in a really strange time right now in terms of identity. We're living in what I call the selfie culture. Everything is about me, 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 me. And if you look at the selfie culture, people have become so self-obsessed that all they're thinking about is themselves. So their identity is purely geared towards me, 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 me. That is why you will see around the world that things are going through a bit of a tough phase. Divorce rates are going up, teenage pregnancies are going up, people are driving towards materialism because everything is about me, 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 me. The selfie or the selfish, the selfish culture. I'm asking you to look at it this way. On one side, if you have your identity and you're crystal clear and you make your identity of a person that focuses out, about an identity, about a person that really, really cares about people around them. So when I walk into this environment, I should not be thinking about how good I'm looking. I should not be thinking about how I'm performing. My focus has to be, what can I do for these people? What can I do with my identity to make a massive difference in the environment wherever I go in? Whereas if you look at Facebook right now, I can go on Facebook right now and go through 10 profiles and look at 10 profiles and predict almost 100% of the times which people have challenges in their life and which people don't. If I go to a profile and I see people that's in, people putting pictures of themselves over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, and I see another profile where people are talking about the world, they're talking about other things that have nothing to do with them, I can tell you that both people are completely different in life. One person will have huge emotional challenges because the whole focus is on themselves, and the other person has more of a worldly view of life, more of a carefree view of life, more, less stress of life because they're focused out. So this is what I, in my programs and my seminars and the workshops that I conduct around the world and the coaching that I do, my main, main focus is simply to help people change their focus from this way to this way. And if I could get you to focus out and build an identity of a person that wherever you go, that you are creating an environment, you're creating a surrounding where you are a source of creating happiness, joy, power, love, kindness, 
by focusing out, you will find that the world will become a greater place. Imagine for a moment, just imagine for a moment that when you go home today, you decide that whenever you meet someone, you are going to make a massive impact in their life. Let's say that was the way you were coded. The way a lion always goes out, he's not going to make friends with the sheep or the deer. He's going to attack the deer. Imagine you were coded to go out and only focus out. And your whole identity was about contribution. Not about me, 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 me. It's about we, we, we. So if I imagine this, you walk out and every person you meet, your only mission in life was to make a humongous contribution in their life. Your only mission in life was to create happiness, joy for the people that you meet. Your only mission in life was to educate and provide knowledge to the people that you meet. Your only mission in life was to create an environment where people are in cause, not in effect. What kind of world would we be living in today? I worry about the future. I really do. We're living in really testing times right now. We're living in times where there's wars happening all over the world. We're living in times where there's financial instability around the world. We're living in times where in a country like India as well, where there's a mix of the West and culture where it's, where it's clashing. We're living in times where people are becoming more about what they drive, what they wear, what they eat and the way they look. And those kind of times are very testing and the only thing that's going to make a difference is not the achievements that you make, it's not going to do. What's going to make the difference is your identity of who you become as a person. What kind of father are you going to be? What kind of mother are you going to be? What kind of husband or wife or daughter or son? What kind of member of society are you going to be? What kind of person are you going to be? Are you going to stand back and let the world go into chaos? Or are you going to be a person that's going to create an identity of a person that's going to make a difference? Are you going to focus in or are you going to focus out? Are you going to live in the selfie culture? Or are you going to live in a world where you can make a really big difference? Because ladies and gentlemen, one thing I will tell you right now is that we're living in a time where people really need to focus out. We're living in a time where pe people really need to form an identity where they, they don't become victims anymore. They become empowered individuals where they go out there and they, they, they don't become people who do this. They become people who do this. They become givers. They give love. They give kindness. And I'm not living in a world of wishy-washy positive thinking. I'm talking about real action. I'm talking about in a, in a time where the world is really, really in need of powerful human beings. In real need of powerful human beings. We don't know what's going to happen in five, ten years from now. But one thing I do know, that if you want to create a revolution in the world, it's not going to be a revolution of countries fighting with each other. It's going to be a revolution of people. It's got to be a revolution of identity. It's got to be a revolution of people that take charge of their life, that really, really want to focus out and make the best of what they have and not complain. And I think that if we do that, we will create a world of really, really powerful people who genuinely care and have a heart that really, really matters. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much.